and hopefully we will be able to finish right on time. Um, most of you have found the, um, the buttons that you're able to use along the side that, that uh, will allow you to ask questions and uh, things like that. If, if uh, you'd like to, there's also an audio mode. And because we've got a little bit smaller group, we're going to try something a little bit different than what you typically will see with a webinar. We're going to open things up and do uh, sort of a panel discussion towards the end of this. Uh, I've also got with me David Hall, who's our engineering services manager. Uh, David and, and his team were responsible for designing the, the new Pro 200 furnace, which we'll talk about uh, here shortly. And I've also got Will Devine with us. He's our senior technical services representative. And uh, Will is a retiree from the Air Force, and he's been in the, uh, the dental business for about over 20 years now. So um, I've got both both of these gentlemen here to help me because my background is uh, I'm a product manager, but I came from a different industry, and I've I picked up quite a bit of on the furnace front, but uh, certainly not the expert that these two gentlemen are. So um, as we move through things, again, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions as we go. You can use that question tab along the, the right-hand side of your screen. As we start to wrap up, uh, we're, we're also going to open up and uh, can unmute the phone lines because, again, we've got a little bit smaller group. So. If you want to use the audio function, which is also down that right-hand side, and dial in through a phone, um, I can send you an audio pin, and that will allow you then to talk um, and kind of ask us some questions without having to type it all out. So that certainly is your option, though. Uh, we'll be monitoring as we go through the presentation. We'll be monitoring uh, the, the, the chat. So if you have a, a question as we go, feel free to type it in there, and we will we will address the questions. Um, if they need immediate attention, we'll address it right away. If it's something that we're going to cover a little bit later on, um, we'll try to we'll try to get to that as we get to it. So, without further ado, though, we um, the first probably 30 minutes or so, we're just going to kind of uh, run through some updates to to the furnace. Um, again, we've recently uh, in the last year changed, uh, made a changeover from the the Pro 100 series furnaces to the Pro 200 series furnaces. And there's some really unique changes uh, that we were able to make when we upgraded. So just want to kind of talk through some of those because I know some of you are using the Pro 200 now, and that's great. We appreciate that. Some of you have customers that are using the new Pro 200, and we appreciate that. But some of you are still considering that upgrade and, and whether or not it's a fit for you. So we just want to you know, without trying to sell you, because we're, again, the, from the technical side, not the sales side, so this isn't a sales pitch, but just kind of give you some of the features and, uh, and benefits of, of the furnace and allow you to make up your own mind. So, um, again, the panelists that we've got working with, with me today, again, I'm Jamie Smart um, with Whitmix, and I'm a lab products manager. I've been here about three and a half years now, and pretty much um, the, the equipment and the chemical products outside of of articulators uh, and a couple of specialty products that go into the dentist office or the operatory, um, I manage most of, of those products, so, so most of the core products that you're probably familiar with. Um, Will Devine, again, is 20 years, uh, retired Air Force. He's our uh, technical senior technical support representative. And again, David Hall is joining us. He's our engineering services manager, and, and he and his team were the brains behind the new Pro 200. So some of the things that we promised we would cover, and I want to make sure that, that we do, um, are an introduction to the Pro 200 series furnaces. Again, there's been some, some major changes, and uh, David and his team were really able to make some major upgrades to the furnace um, as we, as we trans transition from our old style furnace to the new style furnace. And, you know, you're going to look at it. Some of you have actually seen it firsthand in your labs and uh, are, are using it. And, you know, we'd love to, to hear any feedback you have or suggestions, comments as, as we move forward. Um, we also want to talk a little bit about the Pro 200 Master Suite. 
Uh, there's been a little bit of confusion uh, with some folks using the Pro 200 Master Suite and, and some of the, the features and benefits that it does offer you. So we do want to talk a little bit about some of the features and benefits. If there's some specific questions on, on you know, the use of that or, or uh, some of the features, then we'd certainly like to address that. Uh, probably the hot topic that, that a lot of you are excited to hear about is, is pressing lithium disilicate, specifically um, the Emacs material. Um, and you can actually do that with either Pro Series furnace. So that's why we say uh, with either Pro Series furnace. We've, uh, we've done quite a bit of work in-house and, uh, and with some of our customers on, on dialing in those parameters. And we want to share them now with you so that you can, can put them into your process and hopefully It'll save you some time as you're trying to dial in uh, the Emacs parameters and, and using uh, the Pro, Furn Pro Series furnace for pressing Emacs. Another another popular question that we get a lot is is you know how do I calibrate? How often do I calibrate my Pro Series furnace? So we want to address that with you. And then again, as I mentioned, um, we'd like to really kind of open it up, and, and because most of you are are Whitmix Pro Series users or certainly are considering it. We, we really want to have some time to open it up and let you ask any questions of, of our group that uh, that you may have on your mind. There may be specific things that on a specific product uh, in, a, in a given environment that we may not be able to answer right here, but certainly we can address and, and answer as, as, as needed for you and get back to you uh, as quickly as possible. So again, a little bit different twist on on the webinar, we will spend again the first half hour or so kind of going through some of the the, the the information, covering some of that. But again, if you'd like to dial in using your phone, that information is available on the audio um, tab over to your right, and you're welcome to dial in uh, through the phone line. And, and again, we will be opening up um, the phone lines as we can um, as we move forward. So. Thanks again for your attendance, and without further ado, um, we'll go ahead and get started on the Pro 200 series furnace, which, uh, again, we did a survey, as you probably remember or may not remember answering when you registered um, on which furnaces you were using. And I think for, for the majority of, of you, it was a Whitmix furnace of, of some sort. And, and we appreciate the business and, and your support of, of our products. And one of the things in the last year that, that we felt was necessary to take our furnace to the next level was to redesign the furnace so that it was more user friendly, um, that we standardized some of the features that were only offered in, in certain models, and, and also gave it a sort of a, an aesthetic overhaul with, with some rounded edges and, and made it look pretty so while it was sitting on your bench it, um, it was more pleasing to the eye. So, um, those are just a few things that you'll probably notice right off the bat from from the picture. But as we dive in a little bit deeper, um, there certainly are some things on the exterior that you're going to notice. And one is that we've got a new, it's a much larger four-line, 20-character LCD display. Um, you can see that over on the, the left-hand side um, of the furnace here. And so you actually get four lines along with 20 characters going across. Um, the LCD also is, is capable of, of monitoring a lot of the elements um, that you want to be able to see while you're, while you're actually firing. And, and some of those, as you turn the knob, are the time remaining um, in the program or the stage, the current uh, versus the set point temperature. So those are things that you can see. And then the vacuum is also going to be displayed either in inches or millimeters of mercury, depending on how you have your, your furnace set up. So those are a couple things from the, the exterior that, that kind of will, will jump out. Um, also, with the furnace, there's some additional uh, expanded capacity that, that we felt uh, as there's more pressing materials out on the market, as there's more porcelains out on the market. We felt it was also important for us to expand the capacity and the and what you can load into the furnace. So uh, we did go to a 200 program memory and and a very fitting name worked out for us, the Pro 200 furnace. 
Um, so of course it allows you to store 100 more programs than the than the Pro 100 did. And the other thing is, you know, like we just mentioned, is it really provides a lot of additional space as more porcelains, as more pressing materials, you know, flood the market. And I think there's probably a new one every few days that we, well, a few weeks that, that we hear about on the market and that, you know, we get the, the information on. And so we want you to be able to add those without having to make decisions on what you're going to get rid of. And the other one is that we've got additional open I.O. in-out ports. Um, and not only is that important for being able to add some more external devices, but what, what we've been able to do by making this major overhaul of, of the furnace is we've been able to upgrade the main board so that we can actually add additional capacity if we need to. We can actually add some additional programming. And without actually having to replace your entire furnace, a lot of these upgrades are going to be retrofitable so that you can either send your furnace back in and we can make that upgrade. Some of them we can probably even send product out to the field. Um, and, and you might even be able to retrofit it in the field without having to buy a whole new furnace. So we've really opened up. Um, we were really at, at the max capacity that the Pro 100 uh, was running at, at top end. There wasn't any more to, to squeeze out of it. With the Pro 200, we've got a lot of open capacity and a lot of, of options for expanding the, the furnace without having to replace the furnace. And we, we really thought that was important for our customers is as you expand, the furnace can expand with you. So um, those are a couple of the, the external things, a few of the internal things. Um, there is one other um, external feature that you'll notice. Um, it does have a USB port, and I'll actually talk a little bit more about that in one of the coming slides. But before we get into the USB port and kind of how that works, um, we, re we want to introduce, and, and it's really kind of, it's been introduced, and then we just want to talk to you about it a little bit, uh, the new Whitmix Pro 200 Series Master Suite. And the Master Suite is very unique. Uh, it was designed by one of our software and engineers here at Whitmix. And really what it is, it's a, it's a graph-based PC application. And it ships with every Pro 200 series furnace. And instead of having to spin the dial or sit in front of a furnace and, and even trying to use some of the touch screens or touch pads, you're able to actually pull up on your computer screen a new program. So for those of you that have the Pro 200, it was a CD that shipped um, with it. It had the master suite on there. Uh, it also contained an update. Some people needed uh, .NET framework updates, uh, depending on the age of their computer. So that also shipped as part of the package. But it loads very easily. It takes up very little space on your computer. And it's very helpful for loading new programs, particularly if you have more than 25 or 30, and, and your your hands get tired from spinning the knob. So, um, as you'll see, one of the some of the unique features um, of the master suite are, as you get started, it'll allow you to pull down and determine which program number you want to use in the first box. You can actually type in the name instead of having to dial it in on your your furnace. These Stage um, one and two, they're just toggle buttons. So just like a, a, your other software on your computer, if you click on the one stage, it would change that over um, and allow you to use that instead of um, instead of having to type it in or, or toggle back and forth. Uh, fire uh, fusing adjust, it'll allow you to put in a program specific fusing adjust. So if you have a, a program that that, that you need to use an overfire or underfire for it will allow you to add that on the fly as well as whatever the adjustment is that you need. Programs that use vacuum, uh, it will also allow you to toggle between using vacuum or not using vacuum. And a pull down menu will allow you to adjust the vacuum. Uh, it is defaulted to 71 centimeters, so that's uh, a default in there, but you can adjust it as needed. And of course, if you're using titanium, you can have the option of, of using argon or not using argon. 
the other ones as you work through, you've got your dry time or, or entry time. Um, again, there's some nomenclature things there that, that we use that may not fit exactly to the parameters that, that you get from your porcelain manufacturer. Um, and we're more than willing to help. One of the things that we're working on right now is actually creating a table so that we can use our terminology versus the various uh, porcelain manufacturers' terminology and make sure that as you see ours, you can cross-reference. So uh, that should be up on our, our website in the next two to three weeks. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that we've got everything, all the bugs worked out before we we present that to you, but uh, you can look for that on the website on the, in the Pro 200 section um, soon. So uh, the next step, of course, you know, you can add your entry temperature or dry time, entry time or dry time. Uh, everything's a pull down, so you can do your entry temperature that way. Uh, your rate rise, hold temperature. This happens to be set for a two stage, so it actually will offer you a, the, the second rate rise, um, and it really it makes it a lot. Math, it, it, it makes this a lot more efficient. It makes it a lot easier to put in programs to be able to use the drop downs instead of having to roll through things. You actually can see what you're doing. And at the bottom, then, before you can actually save a program, um, if you try to save a program and some of your parameters don't fit or don't work, uh, it won't allow you to save it. It will actually come up and show you an error. If you wanted to try to circumvent that and make sure that everything was was ready before you saved it, you can actually click on the check um, button down at the bottom, and that'll actually also go through and do a quick check to make sure that all the parameters make sense. Uh, for example, if you had your vacuum start temperature happen to be higher than your vacuum start stop temperature, it would not allow you to save that program because there was a fault. Um, that the furnace couldn't actually run that, that particular program. So it's got kind of a built-in um, checking device to make sure that the programs make sense and that the furnace can actually run the program once you get it loaded onto your furnace. And so you know, the big thing here with, with the, the master suite is it's going to enable you to create your programs on any PC you can modify the programs on any PC, and then you can actually print the programs from any PC using a screen print um, function. So you can actually print out your charts, uh, make a book of them, and, and put them next to your furnace as, as you need to, or keep them around for the technicians to, to look at as they if they need to reference any of that. One of the other keys, though, is that it allows you to easily transfer any programs you select, or all programs should you choose, from the PC to the Pro 200 furnace using our included flash drive. So you're going to get a thumb drive that will ship with the furnace. And the great thing is that you can pick, if you have 200 programs in there, but most of your technicians only use 15, you can choose those 15, move them to the flash drive, and load all the different Pro 200 furnaces from that flash drive. The other big key is, you know, we've often, if you've used the Pro 100, you're familiar with the red box or the blue box, and um, one of the things that allowed you to do was to save the programs from the furnace to a device that you could use to reload your furnace if you had a, a power outage or some sort of an, an issue that caused the furnace to need to be reset. Now, by having it on a thumb drive, and on your computer, it makes it very easy should an issue come up that the furnace were to get erased or need to be reset, you can actually transfer all the programs from the furnace to the furnace using the flash drive, from, to one furnace, from one furnace to another furnace using the flash drive, or from the furnace back to your computer using the flash drive. So it makes it very user friendly. Again, there's been a little confusion. Um, some folks, I think, are a little bit nervous about, you know, getting on there for the first time. But I can assure you that um, it is makes life a lot easier to be able to enter the programs on onto your computer and know that they're there. Be able to move them to a flash drive technology that we're all very familiar with now, and and bounce them around to the different furnaces. It's, it's a huge time saver as you move forward. So keep that in mind as you 
as you work through it. And if you you know still aren't comfortable with the master suite, we've got lots of folks that can help you, and and uh, we'll get to that as we move forward. But we talked a little bit about how you get the, the programs onto a thumb drive, and I mentioned earlier that uh, we do have a USB port on the furnace now. And again, what that allows it to you to do is to easily transfer your programs with common technology, a, a thumb drive. And, and we found that most thumb drives, even the ones you can buy at Best Buy and um, Office Max and places like that, if you happen to lose the one that came with it, most of them are, are compatible. You may run into one that's not, but we've had a lot of luck with the Sony um, flash drive. So if you can find a Sony flash drive um, at your big box store, we certainly recommend that. Or call us. We, of course, have backups, and we'd love to provide you with, <laughs> with another one. Um, we'd rather be safe than sorry. But, but you can actually um, try to use some other thumb drives. We've had some luck with that as well. So you can give it a try. Um, the, the other thing is that, again, we mentioned that they all, all the units will ship with a, the, the one gig, and now we've actually gone to a two gig um, memory stick that will actually be there. Um, and that memory stick or the flash drive can be used to transfer files from unit to unit. But also, um, as we move forward with developing new firmware, similar to what you would do with your GPS, or with um, yeah, another device that's your, like your cell phone where you can plug it in and upgrade the firmware so that you've got the latest and greatest. As we start to move forward with our firmware updates, you'll also be able to use the thumb drive and the USB port to download the latest firmware upgrades and put those into your furnace. Um, very easily, you know, very safe, and again, it, it keeps you from having to, to restart everything. As we move forward a little bit and start to talk about calibration, you'll also see that uh, some of the older units, uh, Pro 200 units that are out there, are going to be shipping with some of the new devices will actually ship with firmware upgrades on a memory stick. So again, it's, it's technology that we're getting more and more comfortable with. We feel fairly confident uh, that it makes programming the furnace and transferring programs a lot easier. So I, I highly recommend that you at least give it a try and if you're still having trouble give us a call and we'll we'll certainly walk you through it so a few of the other highlights of the uh, the pro 200 we've gone to the membrane keys there there tend to be more durable keys they hold up uh, to the heavy use and, and in general reduce the wear uh, on a unit we've got the embedded LED lights um, they're very bright uh, easy, easy to see from even across the lab and and as, just like on the old Pro 100, they will give you visual indicators of the status. We've still got the curve, and the lights will light up as, as the furnace goes through the cycles so that you can actually see where the, where the program is as you're moving through. Uh, we've gone to a detent knob. It was uh, uh, very much, <laughs> it was one of the things that we heard quite a bit of feedback that people were very interested in the detent knob. So instead of having to spin the knob and then hit the next button, now the detent knob allows you to spin the knob and then push it in, and it will allow you to get a lot faster with your menu um, control and also a, a lot easier with just the general navigation of, of the furnace. So um, that's one of the other improvements that, that, we've, that we've made to it. A few of the other things that are, are new to the Pro 200, um, and a lot of these are just kind of a, we've standardized, as I mentioned up front, the, the units so that we don't have three different, totally different units. A lot of them have light components. A couple of those are we've added the quick cool jet um, to both the Pro Press and the Pro 200. So um, that, that feature has become standard. It allows you to cool down your, your muffle um, a lot faster than just waiting for it um, with just an open muffle. Um, both units um, are very energy efficient. Uh, they, you know, they've both gone to a like muffle, um, and and they tend to heat a lot, you know, very uniformly, um, and that obviously reduces your re rework and and helps throughout the the entire cycle. Uh, the Pro Press actually has an updated thermocouple. Uh, it actually shares the same thermocouple now as the the Pro, the regular Pro 200. 
Um, and, and so that's been an upgrade for the Pro Press. And finally, the last upgrade for the Pro 200, the Pro Press 200, is now you can press a 300 gram ring, and that um, comes standard now. There's no additional equipment or anything to buy if you choose to to press a 300 gram ring. So for those Pro 100 folks, uh, we, you know, we feel like we've we've gone in the right direction. If, if there's some questions about that, we will certainly, you know, the comparisons we'll try to address them. But in the interim, what hasn't changed? Well, the Pro 200 series furnaces still ship with uh, a free vacuum pump um, for, for now. Um, that's still part of the promotion that we're offering as we've launched the Pro 200. The muffle chamber size is the same. Um, still working with the same maximum temperature. And the shipping weights, uh, even with all the upgrades, have remained virtually the same. So those are some things that, that haven't changed as we've, we've been able to make some upgrades. Now probably the, the, the time everybody's been waiting for, and I'm going to try to move through this um, and then allow for questions, of course, as we move forward. But you know, one of the big questions we get, uh, our technical support group gets, is, is it possible to press lithium disilicate namely Emacs, with a Pro Press 100 or a Pro Press 200? And the answer is a resounding yes, <laughs> it can be done. Um, we have quite a bit of in-house uh, experience with it. David and his group, uh, and, and along with Will and, and, and Will's group, they've pressed dozens and dozens of rings. And, and at this point, we feel very comfortable with not only our in-house testing, but a lot of the users, a few of which are, have joined us today, fortunately, um, and, and have some of their external experiences. We've been able to get feedback from folks that were some of our early adopters, and it really helped us you know, with the learning curve, understanding the Emacs and, and the best way to, to press it using either the old ProPress 100 or the ProPress 200. Um, you know, again, I'm not sure if anybody has uh, any experience. As I know, just from the group that's here, maybe once once we open the phones up, um, I can give them a chance to to share if they'd like. But uh, you know, we've had a lot of our our lab customers help us out, and as we move forward, I'll try to remember to get them to share some of their experiences with you. Um, so the next the next slide really takes us to probably the, the, the most important thing that we're going to try to present today. And it's, um, you know, it's really exciting for us to have gotten to the point now where we feel like we can publish this to the masses. And um, that's our Emacs parameter table. And this is really, through our experience, through our feedback from our customers, you know, this is, is really the, the, the table that we feel comfortable presenting to you. And it's a really good baseline to get started with. Um, I, I won't tell you that the first time you put these parameters in and run through this cycle, it's going to be perfect. And, and I don't think that uh, Rob or Tim or some of the other guys that have, <laughs> have worked their way through the, the Emacs um, maze will tell you that either. But we feel very comfortable that using the parameters, um, it, it particularly important, of course, if you know your wax weight to kind of figure out where you fit in this and, and know where you get your start. But you'll notice that on the 100 gram size, we use a, a high temperature of 925. On the 200 gram ring, we've gone with a high temperature of 930. And that's standard, um, no matter what the weight is uh, of, of the different, no matter what your wax weight is. Uh, and the whole time also remains standard, 15 minutes on a 100 gram ring and 200, uh, 25 minutes on a 200 gram ring. So, um, you know, then what really starts to adjust is, is your press time. And, and again, that's where we've had quite a bit of help from, from some of our early adopters, folks that uh, started working with the Emacs on the ProPress 100. And then what we've been able to do is take a lot of those results and verify them in-house using a lot of the trials and, and tribulations of, of our, our users. And again, this, this really is a baseline. Uh, we tried to give you as much information as possible to at least 
get you started and, and feeling comfortable. And, and having set up a, a, a few Pro 200s and Pro 100s and some labs that are doing Emacs, we feel very comfortable that this will at least get you into the ballpark. And again, you may need to make some adjustments. We're not saying it's going to be perfect um, the first time. But as you start to look at the reaction layer, um, that, you, know, you can dial back if the reaction layer is too thick. Um, if you're getting short presses, of course, you can, you can adjust up. But the key is that this will get you started. If it's not perfect, the other key is we're here to help you. And uh, again, we appreciate the fact that you're you bought our furnace and that we're considering buying our furnace or at least interested enough that you're going to listen to us and, and we want to help you get through the problem. So um, again, this information, uh, probably your next question is, we appreciate that you've shown it to us on a webinar. Now how do I get a copy of this table? Uh, the webinar will be available um, and along with this press, uh, parameter table on our website um, under the Pro 200 and Pro 100 tab. So um, it'll, it'll be posted. We wanted to, you know, you're kind of the first to see it in this webinar, and that was uh, was really why we uh, we were motivated to give it to you here first, and then we'll actually be publishing it uh, shortly. So, but you're the first ones to have seen this, and, and again, we we hope to um, you know be able to work with you through this. If, if Emacs is still a problem. Um, once you've got these parameters, feel free to call us. That's why we're here uh, to help as much as we can. There is a little bit of fine print, though, that I want to make sure that, that we cover um, with all of this. The first is the base temperature for all the pressings was 700 degrees C. Um, the rate rise that was used was 60 degrees C for all the pressings and the ones we've done in-house as well as, as externally for the most part. The pressure was set at five bar, um, and again, as we mentioned, you know, these are really your starting points for pressing Emacs. You'll have to dial it in a little bit. It's not going to be perfect probably the first time, although we have had some that, <laughs> that were. Um, but again, you're going to have to work with it a little bit, and if you're having trouble and you start to get frustrated, just give us a call. Um, finally, and, and this, this can be said no matter what you're pressing or firing, but the you know, calibration of, of our furnace and, and the pressure, certainly the pressure used to, to press, is going to influence the results. And um, so you want to keep that in mind as, as you're making adjustments that, that you know, we've kind of given you some baselines to work with, temperatures, times, pressures, and, and things, but all those things can be tweaked and adjusted, and, and you may have to a little bit to get it perfect, but but uh, we feel like we've given you a really strong starting point. So speaking of calibration, uh, one of the things that we've tried to do as, as we move forward with the Pro 200, again, is make it as user-friendly as possible. And I talked a little bit earlier about how the, the fact that it is expandable um, and that we're going to be able to do some new things because of the capacity that we have internally with, with the the new furnace, and one of those things uh, that we've been at, that the engineering group has been able to develop is the ProCal. Some of you may have them in your lab. Uh, you may be familiar with um, similar devices, but this is really a, a unique device. And not only is it compatible with the Pro 200, but because we ship a an adapter uh, that's down there in this uh, bottom left hand corner. This adapter will actually also allow you to plug in the ProCal into a Pro 100 furnace. Now, you won't actually be able to do automated calibration on a Pro 100 furnace, but because of the digital readout um, of the ProCal and, and certainly you know, making it a lot easier than listening, listening for beeps uh, like you had to do with the ProCheck, it certainly is a step in the right direction for you. You can actually see the digital readout, and and we feel like it's certainly an improvement on what we have with the ProCheck. But you will still have to go back in uh, after recording your temperatures and manually make adjustments. Now the difference between that and the Pro 200 is on the Pro 200 you can do a quick check, a quick calibration check, and determine how far off the furnace is. 
if it's within two or three degrees, it, it really is close enough that you probably don't need to run a full um, blown recalibration of the furnace. If it starts to drift more than three or four degrees, it's time to probably go ahead and recalibrate the furnace. The nice thing about the with the ProCal and the Pro 200 partnership is you can actually go into the furnace settings and run an automatic calibration. And what that'll do is over the course of about an hour to an hour and a half, it'll go through and, and take readings at three different temperatures, um, and, and it'll actually record those readings, do the calculations for you, and also make the adjustments, the global adjustments on your furnace so that when it finishes the cycle, your furnace has been recalibrated. So it's true recalibration of the furnace. The other great thing about this, this device is because it's got a built-in thermocouple as opposed to using some sort of a, a disposable mechanism, the ProCal can be used over and over and over and over without having to replace anything. So um, we know that there's some other devices out there that are, are disposable calibration uh, type tools, and, and we feel, you know, very comfortable with the ProCal in that you can use it over and over and over again. You can use it as often as you like, and again, you'll get the same benefits um, whether you're doing it on a Pro 100 or a Pro 200 with the accuracy of, of the device. Um, a few things we've already talked about a little bit. We've got the quick QC check mode, and what that does is it allows you to very, very quickly go in, pick out a temperature, that you fire at very frequently or that you use real often. Um, dial in that temperature and then look at the digital readout on the device and it'll tell you very quickly whether or not you're within, within an acceptable range of, of your calibration or if it's time to go ahead and, and recalibrate the furnace. And again, when you decide you need to recalibrate the furnace, if you do it at the end of the day, the, there's a soaked muffle mode which automatically, again, analyzes it recalibrates any Pro 200 series furnace, and it also will do that for both low and high fusing porcelain temperatures. If you happen to come in in the morning and realize you forgot to recalibrate it after you did your quick QC check, that's not a problem. You can actually use the ProCal cool muffle function, and what that does, it'll actually run a, a heat soak cycle in the furnace. Uh, it'll bring it up to 800 degrees C before it actually starts the full calibration mode. It takes a little bit longer because it does have a built-in soak cycle, but it's, uh, it's also help, it's still a lot more helpful than having to sit there and wait uh, and dial in numbers and do it manually. So uh, we still are trying to save you time there and, and get make sure that you've got a, a calibrated furnace. Finally, we mentioned uh, the adapter that is included uh, with all the ProCal devices and what it does is it allows you to use the ProCal with a Pro 100 series furnace. It'll allow you to check your temperatures, uh, multiple temperatures, any one you choose. Um, but again, to do your full calibration, it does require manual setting of, of your global temperature setting. So um, that's one thing that we weren't able to, you know, because we were maximum capacity with what we had on our, our Pro 100 and as much spaces it would have taken to adjust the firmware. We, we just weren't able to make it backwards compatible, but at least the devices uh, can be used and again the adapter ships with the unit, so with the ProCal. So if you get one, you'll be able to use it on either furnace or both furnaces if you happen to have some old Pro 100s and some new Pro 200s. Speaking of calibration, we're often asked, and I just wanted to kind of go through some of the, you know, some of our commonly asked questions, things that people ask us um, fairly regularly. I think they're questions that, that Will and Craig and probably David and, and some of those folks, we, we hear when we go out to the labs, um, there are people that call in and ask, but one of the, one of the questions we get over and over and over is, is how often should I calibrate my furnace? And they, it really is dependent upon how much use the furnace gets, and that, that's really the key for, for determining that. But what, what we like to tell people, and, and now with the new ProCal, what's a lot easier to tell people is it doesn't hurt to do it once a month. Um, even if all you do is check to make sure that it's calibrated, it doesn't hurt to do it once a month. Go in there and check it. 
the key is to document your findings and so that you've got a running tally of, of where you are and you can quickly pick out any outliers. So as, as you start to collect data, um, you, 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 if you start to see a trend where things are falling off or, or the temperature starting to climb, you start you see the trend and then you're able to go in there and make adjustments before it gets too far out of line. Now certainly um, there's there's labs that don't use their furnaces as often that can get by with quarterly. But again, you know, it goes back to making sure that you want you document the, the findings, that you keep a running log, um, you date them, and that you can you can quickly pick out any trends where things start to look like they're going out of out of line. So, um, and catch them as quickly as possible, and try to bring the the furnace back into calibration as quickly as possible. So, um, again, there's no there's no good answer. There's no perfect answer for every lab. But if somebody were to ask us, we generally recommend once a month. It doesn't take too long, particularly with with some of the new devices that are are available. And it's just a great habit to get into to make sure that uh, the things are running well with the furnace and that. When a technician comes up and says, "I'm it's, I'm getting short presses or I'm blowing up rings," you, we can go back to the log and take a look at, at where you've been and make sure that there's nothing uh, going on in the furnace that might be causing some of those issues. Um, another common question that we get is, "What medium or what should I put into my furnace when I'm purging?" and the other question is, of course, along with the calibrate, is, is how often should I purge my furnace? And again, you know, as long as you don't, as long as you purge the furnace when, when, you, when it arrives and you get the moisture out from the time it arrives, you, you should be fairly safe as long as you don't turn the furnace off to not draw moisture in there. Um, but the other thing you want to consider is any contaminants, and what purging will do is allow you to burn off any of any contaminants that have gotten into the to the furnace. At Whitmix, we actually recommend not putting a medium in there at all. Um, we know that there's some available. Uh, you know, we can't, we don't really, can't really speak to them working and or not working. But you know, if if you can save a few dollars and and purge your furnace. You really don't need to put anything in there um, as, as you're purging your furnace. The purge cycle is available in, in our manuals, and it's also available online. So if you have any questions about the actual purge cycle for the different uh, for the furnaces, that, that information is, is readily available, and if, you know, we can certainly share it with you um, as, as needed. So that kind of takes us to our, our last trick question we, you know, does it save energy, or can I turn my furnace off at the end of the day so that I'm not using the energy? And, and one of the features that we've got in the all the, all the Pro Series furnaces is, is the night mode, and so that you don't have to purge the furnace and worry about building up moisture in the furnace. We strongly recommend that you don't turn your furnace off at the end of the day, but that you put it into a night mode. And one of the nice things about the the Pro Series furnaces is they'll actually automatically go into night mode. Um, if they stand idle long enough, they'll go into night mode. But one of the things you're going to want to do is make sure you go into your special functions menu and that you set the temperature up for night mode so that when it kicks into night mode, you know where it's going and, and where it's going to be when you come in the next day. So those are a few, you know, commonly asked questions that we get. Um, you know, we wanted to try to address them, and some of them are kind of trick questions, and um, any of you that are, are going to be taking our uh, needing a CE credit for it, a few of those little trick questions uh, will probably be found on the quiz, so uh, you might want to keep a few of those in mind. Well, I've gone over by about 10 minutes more than I really wanted to, to talk, but um, hopefully we've, we've addressed some of the, the major issues that, that you may have with the furnace. Um, and now, Again, we want to really turn it over to you and allow you to uh, ask some questions of either David, uh, who's here with us, or Will. Um, I may be able to answer some of them. Uh, we do have a couple questions that have that have popped up on the the the, the board, and I'll, I'll just kind of read them so that everybody's 
familiar with them, and then um, we'll answer them. And if you have questions, again, there is a question tab uh, on the right-hand side of, of the, the menu. And you're welcome to type in questions, and, and we'll kind of address them as they come. And if there's something, again, we can't answer, we will certainly do our best to find out an answer and get back to you. Um, but we'll start out, because this one I think uh, I'll let David really address, but we know the answer to this one. Um, one of the uh, attendees asked, is it possible to transfer the old programs from a 100 to a 200? And the, the answer is yes and no, and I'm going to let, I'll let David kind of address it in more detail. But um, so, David, do you mind uh, addressing the, is it possible to transfer old programs from a 100 to a 200? Well, thank you very much, Jamie, for, <laughs> for letting me address that one. The, the answer is not electronically. Um, the file formats, uh, the, the program file formats on the 100 and the 200, uh, unfortunately, are not compatible. So pretty much the, the solution is to uh, key the 100 programs into the master suite and then transfer them to the 200. That's, uh, unfortunately, that's the answer. We, we have actually work, been able to work with a few folks on uh, being able to take the programs off the 100, print them out, and then, um, you know, we also have kind of a master file uh, of some of the programs that, that are available. Um, so as folks are starting to, as you're starting to upgrade or considering going from a 100 to a 200, um, certainly we, you know, we want to try to help you out the best we can. And so if there's a specific program you're looking for, it's very possible that either we have it on, on our file or um, we can we can get it for you. So, you know, certainly, if you're upgrading or you're you're concerned about going from the 100 to the 200, let us know. Give us a call. I will be providing you with uh, our 800 number and our extensions um, before we leave and, and sign off. So, you know, if there are certain things that that uh, that programs you want, we do have a master file. We started to build a nice inventory of of programs and, and again because everything's able to be emailed electronically we can email you the, the, the parameters and then you can actually just load those right into the master suite load it over to the flash drive and and very quickly be up and running so again if there's specific programs we can probably help you out um, that's probably the best way to get programs from 100 to a 200 because unfortunately as David mentioned the codes aren't compatible um, the next, uh, one of the other questions that was, was asked, and I, I, I don't have a good answer. Um, I know David's been working with it quite a bit also, but uh, it was asked, does Whitmix have Empress parameters for the ProPress 100 or 200? And I know we've been working quite a bit with, with Empress, but I don't know that we've actually created a, a chart for it. Are you... Uh, well, off the top of my head, the uh, entry temperature is the same as Emacs 700C, 60C rate rise, 1075 hole temperature. And uh, Will, can you help me out with the uh, press time? We're going to the Empress. Uh, I don't have any, any chart that I've got, but I can certainly look and see if we have anything. Rob, I think, uh, Rob, I think you asked the question. and. Uh, it sounds like we've got some of the basic information. Why don't we put together a chart and uh, we can put that up as well. Um, put that, not, you know, we'll put that up with the Emacs chart and make sure that you've got the, the parameters we've been working with. Again, um, we've been working with the Empress and the Emacs pretty steadily here over the last few weeks. So uh, I should be able to, to get you some additional information shortly. Um, one of the questions about, uh, oh, Rob also pointed out, and again, Rob, I appreciate you, you chiming in. Um, Rob has worked his way through uh, a lot of the, the uh, bugs, the maze of, of pressing Emacs and the, uh, 
Pro Press 100. And uh, again, one of the things that, that he mentions here and some of his feedback is using that reaction layer, that whether it's you know really, really thin or really, really thick as your guide, that'll really allow you to kind of hone in your parameters, the, the press time um, and, and also the, the hold time. Um, you know, the press time is very short with the Emacs, and you, you probably noticed that when we put up the chart. So, um, again, Rob, thanks again for your uh, insight, and, and you know, for the folks that are out there that are that are concerned that that uh, we've given you just enough to be dangerous, uh, we have, and 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 again, you can use the reaction layer really kind of as a guide. So, thanks again, Rob, for that feedback. We appreciate it. Um, the next question is, if the cycle is only a one stage, do you put a zero in the second stage drop boxes? That's a great question. Um, in fact, uh, we'll go back to, I can go back here, and what, what we'll show you is, actually, if you did a one stage, um, instead of actually having the second, the second rate rise, it would actually come straight out and then drop drop off. So if you went to a one stage, and I apologize, I don't have a, a, a diagram of it, um, but if you actually did a one stage, it would actually just drop off. In fact, I can show you a diagram of it. It will take me just one second. Hopefully this is still working and you're able to see my computer. If you're not, I apologize, but hopefully you can still see my computer. Uh, I'm actually just bringing up the Pro Press 200 Master Suite, and again, if you go to Add, which is what we saw before, this is what the one stage will actually look like. So, um, I think uh, Aaron, you probably asked, Aaron asked that question. So, anyway, if you do a one a one stage, instead of actually having the two humps, um, it will actually just have the one. Again, if you go to the two stage, it'll add that second parameter. So the nice thing is you won't have to even think about whether or not uh, you have to add, put in zeros. It'll actually show you uh, right on there that the parameters that you need to answer. So um, so that's kind of one of the one of the nice features again about the, the master suite is it really is very user friendly and it doesn't allow, doesn't really allow you to get too far before it puts you back in check or doesn't allow you to save it when you finish up. So um, hopefully that answered answered your question. Um, Aaron, I believe, thank you for the question. Um, the next question, um, somebody was asking about the the new keyboard and, and the longevity of it. And I, David's probably a a good person to speak to that. Um, of course, we we take a lot of stock in our life testing and and putting these these devices through their their paces before we ever launch them to the field. So, David, I think his he was asking it will it last longer than seven years, and I think that's a loaded question. But <laughs> I, I don't know about seven years, but I I guarantee it'll last longer than than the the 100. And I apologize to the 100 users for for making that statement, but. The reason for that is the 100 used discrete uh, switches that were located behind the panel with round cutouts, and over a period of time, pushing through that vinyl overlay uh, and dimpling the overlay enough to, to actuate those switches, the, the round cutouts in the sheet metal would actually cookie cut the, the, uh, the vinyl overlay. Uh, the membrane are actually little domed switches that are sandwiched in the vinyl overlay, and there is no uh, cutout in the sheet metal behind that. So you've got a good backstop, and membrane uh, switches are guaranteed for millions of cycles. And, and uh, to date, I don't believe we've had a failure. Uh, and we use the membrane switches on, on some of our other products as well. So we've pretty much standardized on, on the membrane type uh, keypads uh, because of the reliability and longevity issue. All right. Um, I guess that kind of answers the question. The next one was, uh, do we feel that the the old old keys were better or not? So I guess that uh, that answered that one. Uh, again, another question that just came in: uh, What's the advantage of using press time versus a press sensor, as in some of the other pressing ovens? And um, again, kind of a loaded question there. 
since we don't actually uh, we don't actually use press sensing yet on our on our furnaces, but um, you know, again, I think you know we're, we're doing quite a bit of experimentation and work on that. Maybe David can speak a little bit to some of the maybe advantages and pros and cons, I guess, of of, of both. I guess a pressing time versus a pressing sensor certainly based on what the technology is that's available now. So, David, do you mind? Sure. Uh, well, I'll be candid with you. For, for feldspathic type glasses, there's, there's little difference. However, with lithium disilicate glasses, uh, the key is to get the, uh, minimize the uh, amount of time that, that the uh, molten glass is in contact with the investment. That's where the reaction layer forms. So the, 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 the more you can reduce the, the press time, the more you can reduce the, the time above the vitreous point that that reaction layer has a chance to form. Uh, and obviously, if you can, if you can sense when uh, you have a complete press, then you can obviously minimize the, the pressing time. And, but the trick is to get the glass below, cool below the vitreous point at the earliest possible moment. So there you go. And, and again, as, as we provided some of the, the, the parameters, that was really one of the keys for us as we worked through it. And I know some of our, our users worked through it, was trying to find that, that and, and as you start to work through it, you're going to need to find that perfect uh, balance of like, you have a full press, but you don't leave it in there any longer than you have to so that you don't develop the, a, a more of a reaction layer. And that's really one of the reasons that we felt it was important to get out to our, certainly our, our, our Pro Series users or people that maybe had not chosen a pro, the Pro Series because of it, it lacked sense pressing, et cetera, and really wanted to give you the parameters to, to at least get started and get you close. So um, you know, hopefully we're moving in the right direction uh, as a, you know, we are also looking into some of some other technology for for pressing and, and being able to stop the, the pressing as, as quickly as possible. So, um, you know, hopefully those things will be things that can come in the near future for us. And, and again, hopefully uh, our, our goal is to have them be retrofittable as now the furnace certainly is capable of, of adding things like that to it uh, without having to upgrade your entire furnace. So, so that's our goal. We're working on it. Um, and, and we're trying to find the best method for for uh, for pre sense pressing. But um, one of the other questions I think both David and Will have you've done quite a bit with it. But um, we asked about the type of investment that we've been using um, in terms of in-house our in-house testing, the investment that we use. Well, do you know what we've we've been using um, Formula One. We know we've used the Rob asked to answer your question. We've used Formula One and Press Vest for for uh, the for what we've been doing on our our in house testing. Um, you know, in, in in theory, there's they all you know that you should get similar somewhat similar results with our our Formula One, but. Those are the products we've been using. Uh, we do know that there's other products out there that folks have used, and um, we can certainly try to help you with that if, if you are using something different. Uh, we can certainly try to help you overcome any hurdles you might have with that as well. So, um, but for our for our in-house and for most of our our external customers, we have been using the the Formula One. And in terms of reaction layer, we really haven't noticed any difference in terms. Of it, it, again, it comes back to, to getting it below the vitreous point at the earliest possible time without shorting the press. But in terms of chemically reacting, uh, we have not yet noticed any difference between for, Formula One and press fit. So yeah, again, to kind of restate what, what David said, and I was the point I guess I was trying to make was, you know, we've been using both of the, the press vest and our Formula One. We've, you know, chemically we haven't noticed a difference as long as you can can stop that pressing as quickly as possible and get it out of the out of the heat to slow down that reaction layer. That's the that's that really is the key. So, well, I don't see any more questions, and I, I do know that your your time is is very valuable, and so we want to try to 
finish up uh, on time, as on time as possible for you. Uh, if there are other questions, um, feel free to, to give us a, a call. Um, I have provided some technical support numbers that, that are, are, will be helpful for you as we move forward. Um, yeah, the 1-800-626-5651 is our 800 number, uh, toll-free number you can dial in. Um, down below I've provided you with three extensions um, of the folks that probably can give you the most immediate technical support help. Um, myself, and I, I, I do my best, again, I'm, I'm a marketing person in a, in a dental technician's body. No. Um, I, I'm doing my best to, to learn, and, uh, and I'll, if I can't help you, I'll find somebody that can. But my extension's there at the top. Um, David Ensley, who uh, is out of town and wasn't able to join us, but some of you, if you've uh, been around our, our furnaces for any amount of time, have probably run into David Ensley at some point. But he's our lead uh, furnace service technician. I've got his extension there. He can really help you a lot with if, if you have a, a specific mechanical problem. And then, of course, Will Devine has been helping us out today. He's our senior uh, technical support representative. His extension is, is down there at the bottom. And if for whatever reason you can't get a hold of, of one of us at the extension, if you dial the 1-800-626-5651 and you hit 2, um, you can actually get to our customer uh, service group and they can direct you to somebody that can that can help you so um, again we appreciate all your your attention and and spending an hour with us uh, if there's any questions feel free to dial those numbers um, if you haven't taken a look at our website recently we just redesigned um, our website the www.witmix.com um, there's a technical support section actually up on the top bar. A lot of the, the things we've talked about, questions, um, can be answered there. Uh, you'll be able to find this presentation uh, there as well as on the Pro 200 product page uh, and Pro 100 product page in the near future, along with uh, the parameters and the chart that we just introduced to you today. So you're the, the first ones that have, have been able to see that. So. Again, we thank you. Um, we can't give a 50% off uh, sale price for the class today, but um, maybe the next one we'll try to, to try to come up with a, a sale price, a, a promotion or something to, to draw you back in. Um, anyway, thanks for all your questions. Thanks for your attention. And uh, we look forward to working with you again soon. Um, thanks, and have a great afternoon.